church. Glad to see everybody here this morning. Everyone, please just rise as we come into praise and worship this morning. Father God, we just lift you up in this place. God, we have eyes only for you this morning. God, we just turn our eyes away from everything that's going on around us right now, and we just want to focus on you right now. God, we just lift you up in this place. In Jesus' my name, amen.
My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. Worship is my warfare. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. We prison as cool as a grave shame is a robber and he's come to take my name love is my redeemer lifting me up from the ground love is the power where my freedom song is found there ain't no grave oh no gonna hold my body down There ain't no grave, yeah. gonna hold my body down. When I hear that trumpet sound, I'm gonna rise up out of the ground. There ain't no grave, yeah. gonna hold my body down. Smooth and velvet tongue Fear is a tyrant He's always telling me to run Love is a resurrection Love is a trumpet sound Love is my weapon I'm gonna take my giants down Cause there ain't no grain Gonna hold my body down Trumpet sound. I'm gonna rise up out of that ground. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. Listen to this. There was a battle, a war between death and life. And there on a tree, the Lamb of God was crucified. When he went on down to hell, and he took back every key. He rose up as a lion, and he set the captives free. Cause there ain't no grave. No, no. That could hold his body down. There ain't no grave that could hold his body down. When he heard that trumpet sound, well, he rose up out of the ground. There ain't no grave. That could hold his body down There ain't no grave That could hold his body down Thank you, Jesus If you walked out of that grave I'm walking to Jesus If you walked out of that grave I'm walking to if you walked out of that grave, I'm a walking too. 
If you walked out of that grave, I walk into I declare it. If you walked out of that grave, I walk into If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to. Cause there ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down. I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna rise up out of the ground There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down There ain't no grave that's gonna hold my body down. Well, Susan, I just wish you would get down on that song. Just let loose. <laughs> I don't know, that last note, I was like, hold my body down. And then I went, <laughs> Y'all, let me sit down for a moment. Hallelujah. I mean, if you can't have fun in church, where can you? I mean, this is, I mean, Jesus is all about fun. God is all about fun. Hey, how are y'all doing? Y'all look nice. I mean, you're just having, that song just got you. You had to go fellowship with Hal and Jane, and just, I noticed you were looking at everybody just waving. It's, it's a good time. It's a good time. We're just all loosey-goosey today. Um, we just got back from vacation this past week. Hallelujah. Oh, you are such a good friend. She is happy for us. I love that. Um, you know, other people are like, vacation. I wish I could go on vacation. <laughs> well, if y'all saw, saw where I went, to visit my sister. And then we went to um, Laguna Beach, which is where we have Beach Freak. So we were not in luxury. We were, you have to take your own sheets and or sleeping bag. And um, we got there and we wiped that place down with Clorox. I'm telling you, it was interesting. <laughs> so, but we were on the beach and that's all that mattered. Um, but it's so good to be home and we're getting back to normal. And I was telling um, Susan and Autumn that we're going to start homeschooling this week. But it'll be like in the middle of the week and it's going to be a soft opening. We're going to have a soft opening. <laughs> And then we're going to go hard the next week. So that's what you do. So I think some of you, I want to encourage some of you who are starting school at home. I won't call it homeschooling. A lot of you are doing virtual school. Just relax. You've got this. Do what you need to do. Don't get all uptight about it. This is just a season in your life. It is just, let me just speak peace over those who are having to deal with that. This is just a season. This whole entire situation in this year is just a season. This is not forever. And we are going to look back on this time, and we're hopefully will be very, very thankful for what we have. And we'll also be thankful for the things that God brought us through during this season. And if you look, there is a lot of good that is going on. I told y'all about a couple of weeks ago, some of the worship leaders from Bethel, they led worship at Huntington Beach, California. There were like 5,000 people there. Um, several other people in California. There's so many Christians in California. And several of them went to San Francisco, and they went by the, mid they went by the bridge, and they just were declaring Jesus over the city. And then the same worship leader, his name's Sean Fugit, he was in Huntington Beach a couple of weeks ago. Last night he went to Portland, Oregon. Yesterday, during the day, he went to Portland, and they had several thousand leading worship. They had this huge worship service in Portland, Oregon, where all the stuff is going on right now. And they were declaring Jesus over, and I'm telling you, 
Jesus, God, reigns in this situation. If you look at the media, if you look at the news, you do not see anything good happening, but there, are, there is good happening. And even on the Wally show, I was listening to that yesterday with Isabella, there was this lady. She was older. She came down with coronavirus. She goes to the hospital. She's in the hospital. One of the nurses heard the lady's name and said, I know that name. It sounds familiar. It was her long lost sister she hadn't seen in 52 years. And that brought them together. So, and the sister's fine. She's recovered. They have been reunited. And isn't God good? So there's so many good things happening. So look for the good in all of this, and you will be encouraged. If you keep watching the news and social media, like Jeremy's doctor said, stop doing that. Don't look at social media. I find the good, though, in social media. Like I was finding out about him leading worship yesterday in Portland, Oregon. And um, it was a beautiful picture they put on Facebook. I'll try to share it on our church group page where he talked about it. And this picture, he said, I'm so glad I was, he has a lot of children. I'm so glad I was able to bring my children to this. They're all on the front row with those hands up in the air with people as far as the eye could see worshiping with them in Portland. So God is doing some amazing things, and we just got to keep looking at that. Know that he's reigning. Know that he's ruling. Know that good is going to come out of this, and God will prevail. Amen? Amen. So that goes for all of y'all. If anything is going on, we're just going to give it to God. Anything we, is out of our control, whether it's our finances, relationships, our health, whatever it is, Lord, take care of it in the name of Jesus right now. We just lay it at your feet in the name of Jesus. God, we're going to worship you through this, and we know you're going to bring us through it. We have a hope. We have a future. It is in you. The Bible says it. We believe it. We know it's true. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. Now, in a few minutes, after worship and tithes and offerings, we're going to pray for all the students and the teachers. Several of you are new at this whole teaching thing. But like I said, give yourself a lot of grace. It is just a season. Embrace it. Embrace that you're going to be with your children more than ever. This gift God has given you and make it fun. It's going to be a good time, I promise. So I'm ready. We're going to have a great worship. We already have. We have a few more songs to do. If you would just stand up. Hallelujah. This next song is good. I'm looking forward to it. So anyway, let's worship. Some of you may know this next song, but it's called Hear Us From Heaven. But it was kind of inspired by uh, Jeremy's message last week. Um, but yeah, it's kind, of an old, it's kind of an older one. It's not that old, but it's from 2004.
answer to it all. Yes, I 
everything down for you, God. All of our pride we lay at your feet, God. Anything that would hold us back from getting closer to you, Lord Jesus, we lay it down. We lay it down this morning, Lord. We lay it down this morning, Lord. You are so worthy, Lord. You are so worthy, poster this week that said today's a good day to choose to have a good day isn't that good if you're a Christ follower every day is a good day to choose to have a good day why? because we serve a God who stands outside of space and time, he's not restricted by the economy, he's not restricted by COVID, he's already defeated everything when we look at the war we win we win. It's already decided. Yeah, today may be a battle, but it's still a good day to choose to have a good day. It's time to receive our morning tithes and offerings. We're going to take up a second offering today for missionaries that we have today, and I'll introduce them in a minute, but most of you know them. There's a few new families. I'll introduce them, give a short description. Everyone have a good week. You know, I, we, Wendy said we went on a little vacation. It's kind of a, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. If you've been to Laguna, you would understand. But, um, but you know what? I, I didn't realize I was stressed out until we went. And every night I dreamt that technology was breaking. Like one week the camera caught on fire. That was in my dreams. And every single night I had dreams like that. Like the internet went down right as service was about to start. So... I didn't realize I was kind of stressed until I got on vacation and started dreaming and realized, hey, I think my subconscious is trying to tell me, hey, you need to chill. <laughs> anyway, God is good. Let's, let's pray over this offering. Father, you're so good, Lord. We love you so much. Pray that you would take the money that comes in today, Lord, that you would use it for your kingdom and your glory, Lord. Father, I pray that as people are, are obedient and giving, Lord, that you would bless them, Lord beyond all measure, Lord. And I, and I just thank you, Lord. I thank you that today's a good day, Lord. It's a good day. And Father, I pray that we would see you moving in, the mit, in our midst, even though when things may look kind of bleak around us when we, when we listen to the news, Lord, I pray, Father, that we would see your face, that we would seek your face and see your goodness because you're still good and you're still moving. And we thank you for that, Lord. We give you glory. We pray this in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. It's Mike Roulette. The sound people have to figure out which one to turn on. I was like, okay, who's saying today? Which one's their red. mic? So the red one is a good one. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, they want us to sing some more. They just left all the words here. You, trust me. Trust me. You don't want me to sing. Yeah, you do. He's good. <laughs> don't let him fool you. <laughs> all right. So this is the time we have had. Jessica put on Facebook this week while we were traveling. I caught a glimpse of it, and I got so tickled. She's probably like, what is she talking about? She said, well, it's kind of sad. Spring break's almost over. <laughs> we had a five-month spring break. And so <laughs> um, it, is, it is winding down. And so this is our time. It's back-to-school Sunday where it's kind of a low-key back-to-school Sunday normally we'd have all the kids come down and the teachers and we pray and we get involved and so but we're going to do a social distancing back to school Sunday situation so in these unprecedented times um, oh gosh 
So if you, but first let's do something a little different. If you, I think we have one in town and the others ran away and went out of town. But um, one, we have one teacher, I think, like has a classroom this, this year right now. There's one right there. I, that's the one. Okay. She is the one. She's in red so we can all see her. And oh yeah! And she has the coolest plexiglass system in her room. You know, She's well, already wearing her mask <laughs> around her neck for when it that. falls off. It's just, just like a, a necklace teacher. now. <laughs> She's with the program. So, if, but we are going to first pray over her. We're going to do some some gradual prayers, layers okay. of prayers. So, um, Bambi's not here today, and Lynn is not here today. But we're going to pray over them too. They have classrooms this year, and so, but. Christy's been extra because even through the summer, she's had camps in her classroom. She's she's been on the she's been in the trenches. Mm-hmm. So Amen. let's pray for her. if y'all could extend your hands to Christy. Lord, I just pray right now. Christy, Lynn, Bambi, any other teacher that has a classroom this year, Father, we pray right now protection over them. Lord, we thank you for this mission that they have, this mission opportunity to be able to be a light to so many others, Father. And God, I pray right now for their protection, for their physical protection. Father, I pray you protect them physically from all sickness in Jesus' name and from anything else that would try to come against them or harm them. In the name of Jesus, I pray protection over them. Lord, I pray you give them wisdom to deal with situations when they arise. And I pray they have easy classes this year and great kids. And this is going to be a good year, not a bad. It is going to be a good year. It may start off different, Lord, but I pray that you will give them so much grace during this time, in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. Amen. All right, so then we have a new group, a new group. (laughs) Rookie teachers. (laughs) You know who you are. (laughs) Okay, so then that would be the parents. Right. The parents. Your distance learning. That's right. Go ahead and stand up. Oh, please. Come on, come on. We know that you are here. Stand up. You don't (laughs) want to admit to it. Thank you, Jessica. Stand up. Stand up. You're I know. To, you're, I might have to call y'all by name. What is wrong? Homeschool homeschooling teachers. Come or on. you're doing we any have, kind of distance learning. I was about to say, now, wait a here minute. We, we do not have three mamas in here. Are you just it. skipping school? Leah Brislin, I have to call you out by name. <laughs> I said homeschool teachers. We said homeschool teachers. Because you were. He said homeschool too. I said homeschool <laughs> teachers. I know what it is. It's, I, I understand it's because I said rookie teachers. They didn't want to be included in rookie teachers because they've been teaching we for years. We have rookie and very well experienced. That's right. Like, <laughs> I won't even go. Their experience is so vast, it's, it's shocking. So anyway, let's pray for them. Father, we just thank you for every single parent in this room, whether they stood up or not. We just pray your blessings on them. The ones that have been doing it for years, homeschooling, I pray that this is going to be a great year very successful, Lord. I pray for our rookie teachers, Father, the parents who this has landed in their laps and it's disrupted their schedules and their lives, but it's going to be a beautiful disruption. Father, I pray blessings on them. I pray grace on them. I pray over their, I pray over their time with their children is going to be precious. Lord, I thank you for giving them this opportunity to be able to impart and impact their children this semester. And God, I pray that this, this will be a short season for them, for those who um, are having a hard time with it. But God, I pray it's going to be a lot of grace. I pray you be over them. I pray their kids learn well at home. I pray for the homeschool mamas to keep on keeping on. And I just pray for all the parents in general. They've had to guide through this um, quarantine and this really weird year that we're having. God, I just pray for so much grace upon them, Lord. I pray they lean into you. Not knowing what's going on, but knowing that you are in charge, Father. We just lean into you right now with what you're doing and where you are taking us. And, Lord, I thank you for every amazing parent who is a part of this church. Lord, I pray this is just a precious, precious time for each of them. Continue to protect them. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now. Really important people. Yes. 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 The They're students. sitting down here on the front row. They have cool Spanish. No, mat. no, no. The students. What? You didn't pray for no, the students. No, no. I'm praying for the important people. Oh. <laughs> okay. We're going to pray for the students too. That's fine. <laughs> he's, he's teasing. He's, been, he's a little sassy. He's been on vacation. Sorry. That's right. Okay. 
There's a lot of y'all. <laughs> and so, um, I, yes, <laughs> all God's children. Yes. So, um, do we have any students? We in the do house? have some students. I have students? two from my Are you a house. Student? There we go. There we go. Woo woo. We got some students. Yes. All right, so we are going to pray. So extend your hands over there. Some that are starting college. Hate to tell you, Ben, you're still a student. <laughs> and on now, we have some of our nursery workers downstairs. Are, um, we have a new teacher, and we have some other students. And so pray for us. So see a student, extend your hand towards them, please. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for these kids. These are mighty warriors for Jesus. We thank you for letting us be a part of their lives. And we get to see them grow up and be nurtured in you, Jesus. And we just pray right now that you will just give them so much grace during this time. And I, I know it's unusual, but Lord, I pray that there's so much grace and there's fun in this time. And they learn and they enjoy being at home. They enjoy being with their people, that they experience you in a fresh new way and just help them during this time. Protect them. When the time comes for some of the kids to go back into the classroom during this season, during this classroom's time. Lord, I pray protection over them in the classroom. Protect them from the wrong people, from the peers that would lead them the wrong path. Protect them from them as well. Lord, I pray that no weapon formed against these kids shall prosper. Protect them physically, emotionally, and spiritually in every way in the name of Jesus. We just pray your protection over them. Lord, I pray that they will have a conviction deep inside of them when things come up where they have to make a decision and when they, their friends or whoever may be trying to take them down the wrong road, I pray something comes up inside of them that convicts them and says, no, that is not the way I'm going. I'm going to go the way I'm supposed to go. And, and Lord, I just pray right now that you just protect them, keep them safe from all harm and danger. As they're even on the road and they're going different places, protect them. Protect them from any sickness. And Lord, we thank you for letting us be a part of their lives. And I pray this is a precious, wonderful year. And protect them as they're growing. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Y'all are going to have a good year. It's going to be good. It's different. But different's not always bad. And so we're just going to, we're just going to, we're all going to be doing it together. You are not alone. The rest of America is with you as well. <laughs> Let me just say one thing. Um, I moved to Huntsville during an ice storm. I can't remember what year it was, 84, 87, somewhere in there. Big ice storm. Some of you probably remember it that you lived here. We had like two inches of ice. And school was out for two weeks. And if I asked my parents if they, you know, were to remember that time, where I was just hanging out with them all day at home, they probably wouldn't remember. But it made a big impression on me because I remembered that as, a, as one of those times where I bonded with my parents. So I just want to say this. You've got an opportunity here to bond with your children and really make some memories. So take time, play some board games together, do fun things, make some memories during this season because this is, it's a special season. It may not come back again. You won't ever get this year again. That's it. Good one. Who's getting a call? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to come up front and answer it. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. You don't have to. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> oh, worship night. That's important. I didn't need to because you just did. You did awesome. So, <laughs> it, it is this Friday. Girl, I've been on vacation. I'm already in August. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it is August the 14th, this That's Friday. It. This Friday. At 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Don't be late because I'm going to lock the doors at 610. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You are just something joking. today. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. my goodness. I don't have to speak, so there's no pressure on me. I'm just like, suckers. <laughs> I'm not even worried about the technology, so... I'm just not worried about anything. If it blows up, I'll be entertained. I'll clap. <laughs> anyway, where are you? You're scaring me there. thought you were playing a joke. Well, they need no introduction, but I'm going to give them an introduction anyway, a little introduction uh, for the families that are new to our church. 
Hal and Jane Ward are missionaries to Spain, and they minister, well, I say Spain, but really Spain and France, because they minister to the Basque population, and a lot of you probably, um, I know Americans are horrible with geography, and um, I'm horrible at geography, I should say that. But if you remember in the 90s, there was a group of separatists called the ETA, it's a terrorist group. That's the Basque population. They were trying to separate from Spain and France. And um, anyway, I know it's a difficult job, uh, what you guys do. I I couldn't do it. I'm thankful that God called you guys because I I couldn't do it. But you guys have been at it for 25 years, is that right? 25 years. Um, And I I can't even fathom 25 years on the mission field. It kind of is scary. But without any further ado, I want to introduce Hal and Jane Ward. Give them a big round of applause. Do you want, would you like this mic? Okay. If you want a cordless, or uh, not a cordless, but uh, one of these, I can get you one of those too. Okay. Thank you. All right, now we're in business. Some of you um, haven't been able to come to church for whatever reason, and that's all right. We'd love to see you again, but one of the things that we that that this church does so wonderful, and what is essential, is singing. When you sing, you release a, um, like a chemical if you want to call it, in your brain. God designed us that way. And that praise and worship, please don't forget to worship with this church or in your home. I just felt the Lord wanted me to encourage you to do that. Singing, even though you don't sing great, (laughs) that's all right, releases the power of God. And if you even have COVID right now, that will bring healing to your body. Trust in the Lord and worship him. So I just need to, I want to thank this church. You know, uh, Pastor was sharing with me that during the, the COVID, of course, all the church, all churches were c- concerned. Oh, what about the tithes and offerings? Well, missionaries even more. <laughs> we were sitting on the field. Ah! But we have a testimony. Thanks to you and many other people that support us. God was faithful. And there were even extra offerings. So thank you, church, for being faithful to give. And thank you for giving to your local church. Because nothing can stop the people of God. Nothing. So thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. (laughs) So with that, we're going forward. Even though we had time to rethink Uh, when we were in quarantine, and we had time to listen to the Lord, stop and listen and take away what was not working on the field and emphasize. You can go ahead and start the video when you want. And this is what the Lord has brought out during this time of quarantine to move forward. So here's the the, uh, video. Oh, I think we've got... So what's on the horizon for VN Ministry in Spain and France? Well, for almost 25 years, we've organized many missions teams from around the world that come to minister here. We've organized dozens of camps, youth retreats, conferences, seminars, meals to encourage pastors. But we're always looking for a place to put these events on, and we have to rent facilities. So we really feel it's time for VN Ministry to have a permanent presence and home in the Basque region by acquiring property in France 
where we can welcome people, host events, and bless the body of Christ in the entire region. What do the Basque think of evangelicals? Well, what should Christians do to reach them? <laughs> what kinds of things has VNM been doing? And uh, one of the things that we did was to record a, a CD in with Basque mm -hmm. songs. Oh, the first yes. CD with yeah. Basque worship songs. Well, well the second, the second you guys. Because you did the first one. <laughs> so I think this reaches more to people's hearts. Yeah. Because wow. we have we are thinking as Basque people to Basque people. Right. So what about the Basque region in France? What is needed in France? Um, to to pray for uh, an open mind in France to mm. uh, think about a God who uh, exists for their lives. And uh, also in France we need a lot of help in uh, churches uh, to serve and to uh, encourage people in their faith uh, because there is not at all a culture of uh, yeah. discipleship mm. yet. And So today, we want to talk to you about something. Um, I have an uh, item here. I don't know if you can all see what it is. This is a dog muzzle. I guess it goes like that. Can you see that better? This is a muzzle. And a muzzle is used on dogs, uh, you know, it, when they bark or bite. And... and um, they have to go for a walk, and so they put on this muzzle. But we're going to talk to you today about something called the muzzle of fear. Now, I'm not talking about a mask or anything like that. We're, we're you know, there's all kinds of things talked about that. We don't want to go there because something is happening spiritually around the globe. We're talking about something spiritual. We're not talking about... Um, masks or what we're doing to fight COVID, you know. We're talking about something spiritual, like a spiritual muzzle of fear. So it's used to stop dogs from bite, barking and biting, but hopefully as Christians, you know, we don't bite. <laughs> Although I have been known personally to bark. I think the children have to leave. <laughs> Sorry. All the children can go to children's church now. <laughs> Okay, I think they're all good. So, um, I personally love to bark. As you know, we live in Pamplona, in Navarra, in Spain, and they have the running of the bulls. And oftentimes what we do is take a group there and stand in the middle of the plaza and bark out the good news of Jesus right in the middle of all that drinking and craziness we would tell people that God loves them. So I, I do love to bark sometimes. But often we feel that there is a force that acts as a muzzle on Christians not to take a stand for the kingdom of God and share the good news. That is the muzzle that seems to be coming upon us. You know, we're not talking about, again, face masks or anything. We're talking about an invisible force that tells the church to be quiet. But that's not going to happen. We need to take off 
the muzzle and be aware spiritually of that muzzle. Our experience in Europe has taught us to refuse that muzzle that the world tries to put on it. So what, is it, what do we mean by this? In Europe now, and in America as well, the society, it's important to go with the status quo and what everybody's saying. Don't raise your voice and say something, anything different it, that might go against what every, what's going on on the television programs on the, on the world today and what's widely accepted. But we are called to stand for truth. Oftentimes I think of that scripture to turn the other cheek. I believe it's in Matthew 5, 39. And you think, well, Christians need to be nice. They don't need to ruffle feathers. They need to be, you know, let people reject you. And sometimes they'll slap you for what you believe. But think about the scripture. You turn the other cheek because you have to get up again and stand in front of that person again. Now, we don't cry out and we slap them back. We don't do all that. But we do stand for truth. Ephesians says stand and stand therefore. So this is a way to take off the muzzle. We've been doing outreach for 25 years in Spain. And many groups come in and they say, it's hard here. People don't want to hear the gospel. They're just walking right by. In fact, some of them laugh and some of them heckle you. I don't know if I like it. And that constant rejection. I remember once I was, um, we were doing a Christmas celebration. We wanted to invite our neighbors to the church. And we put a poster up. And then that poster was torn down. It was right on our church building. Like our, it's a storefront. It was our own building, and they tore it down. Then they tore it down again, and I just mustered up. I'm just going to put it higher and put more tape, (laughs) and I know that's a small thing. That's not a big testimony, but I think now is the time for tenacity. A lot of believers, and even some people on an outreach will say, oh, they tore the poster. I I think this is not what God's calling us to do. And some of us have said in our hearts, oh, this was, there was resistance and they didn't want to hear the truth. So they say, it must have not been God speaking to me. And I'm telling you that it's time for tenacity. When God speaks to you something, just because somebody rejects you, that repeated rejection is a muzzle to us and we have to take it off. And I was praying this morning And I think some of us, and I've done it, and I'm a missionary, (laughs) we've made a pact with ourselves in certain situations, in certain climates, maybe at your work, or I don't know where it is, a pact, uh, um, uh, an agreement with yourself that I'm not going to talk about God there. It's just a flippant thing we say because, look, that's going to stress people out. I'm I'm moving away from the pulpit here. (laughs) It's going to stress people out, and it's going to make me possibly even lose my job. And that person did it, and they were so boisterous, and they were so ridiculous and forcing people and hitting people over with the Bible. And and I don't want to look like that either, that we've made a private pact with our own selves that we're not going to speak about God in that situation. And this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Even I've done this just flippantly. Oh, no, I'm not going to speak about God there because I just need to ease on through that situation. We need to be breaking those pacts. And I believe the Holy Spirit told me, begin to pray for the people that you've made that pact with yourself, break it in your heart, and then begin to pray for those people. God is doing something spiritual to the church now and is using that time of quarantine to break forth and take off that muscle. So I'm excited about it. So in France, we had, I just, I just want to share that you've heard before in France, they say you can't pass out tracts. So the idea is not, oh, we can't preach the gospel. The idea now is how can we be more creative to do it? It's not if, it's how. That's another way to take off that muscle. So this pandemic is another way to overcome. So church, let's just take off that muscle. We must continue to stand for truth and have tenacity. So we ask ourselves, why do we go to church? If you take evangelism and discipleship out of the church, it's just a social club. 
but God is igniting a fire to say, why do I go to church? Because we must preach the gospel. Because people are lost. Redefining just like we're being redefined in our mission. And the Romans and Jews attempted to muscle the apostles, the early believers, but it didn't work. And remember when Jesus, Jesus knew he was God. He knew that most of the disciples, if not all, would be murdered, martyred for preaching the gospel. But he still said to them, go. Go. all this situation that we're living because the Bible says in Romans that we are more than conquerors, but how do we conquer? How do we come out victorious in this situation that we're living all over the world? And we've been really asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And I think to both of us, Jane has already mentioned that we felt like there's a muzzle, again, not a mass, not political stuff, but but just a muzzle of fear on, on Christians all over the world to not really preach the true gospel. And I felt convicted. I felt we had a lot of time just to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I felt like God was saying, go back to talking about Jesus died for our sins. He paid the price if, you, if we repent. You know, you don't hear those words. If we repent, and, and, and God will give you uh, salvation and forgiveness and eternal life. And, and we don't talk about heaven or hell. We talk about programs and we talk about activities and events but go back and just preach the gospel. But this muzzle comes over us because what if it offends people? And, and, and the idea that with the Holy Spirit, I believe that is saying to the church around the world, go back to the gospel. And we, we would listen and say, is this really what God is saying? We had a lot of time to, to listen to the Holy Spirit during this confinement in, in, in Spain. And I'm not trying to be complainy, but... But it wasn't like it. it was in Alabama. I mean, I would get on Facebook and I would see what y'all are doing, you know? I mean, I mean, you know, so for, for myself, quarantine today, we're going to go on a hike in, on Manicino. It's like, that's not a quarantine, you know? Or, or, or like my mother, who's 80 years old, went with my sister to Gulf Shores. We're like, we're going to self-quarantine in Gulf Shores. What kind of quarantine is that? I mean, in Spain, listen, in Pamplona, it's about 200,000 people. But we have the population density of, of, of slightly less than New York City. Uh, everyone lives in high-rise apartment buildings. You couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't leave. Uh, you couldn't. We technically could go to church uh, because we're pastors, but we would leave early in the morning and figure out the route. The, 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 the policemen weren't driving down because we had policemen in the streets making sure no one was walking around. We had militarized police called the civil guard that were actually had roadblocks to make sure no one was getting in and out of the city i mean it was like living in some dictatorship i mean it was really really rough and 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 just confined to this high-rise apartment building that's on the fifth floor of a building and you know people they don't think that god exists or or miracles still occur listen for six weeks we were confined like that, and Jane never chunked me out of the, off the balcony, right? You know? I mean, you're talking about, I mean, yes, miracles happen. God is good. It, you know, and we got through this, but we had lots of time to listen to the Holy Spirit. And he was saying, overcome us. Are, okay, well, how do we become victorious in all of this crazy stuff that we're all living? And God gave me uh, a verse of Scripture uh, because... The Bible says in Revelations 12, 11, if you've got it, or I think it'll be on the screen, that they overcame him, who, and him is the devil, right? It's talking about this, the devil, the accuser, they overcame evil, right? Uh, whether, or not, and I'm not saying any, it, uh, this is not a political statement, but there's something spiritual going on. There's an attack, there's a, a spiritual attack on the world, on churches, on Christianity, on lots of things going on, and they overcame Everything that the devil threw up against them, how? By the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. And I want to talk about quickly, because we want to hear from you. I want to talk about how they, these believers, overcame the evil that was 
coming up against them in their day. One, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Again, the Holy Spirit is calling us to go back to preaching the gospel that Jesus died for our sins and rose again so that we can have life, uh, new life. Yes, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, right? But it's the power of God under salvation. And the gospel really is under attack. In Europe, there's a preacher, probably the most popular, uh, well-known evangelical preacher, pastor, big ministry in the UK, in London. And he, he said, you know, we don't need to talk about the cross, about the atonement. He said, you know, it sounds like divine child abuse. You know, if you talked about, he said, you know, if, if, if you talked about, you know, a, a, a father giving the life of his son to forgive people, you know, why we would call the social services, right? And so we need to talk, stop talking about that because it's offensive. But what the Holy Spirit has been saying is we need to talk about that because it's what gives us life. It's what sets us free. Another thing, you know, about the, the blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb sets us free from a fear that has gripped the world. People all over the world have been gripped by a fear of death, right? Even though, even though tech, statistically, I'm not saying we shouldn't wear a mask or, or, or wash our hands or be careful and be very respectful and follow the rules, but there's a fear of death that has gripped people that in some ways is irrational because they're not even in a vulnerable group. They're not, they're fine. Uh, I, I've been fine. I've been very careful. We lived through Spain, who still statistically is where ratio population-wise, we've had the most COVID deaths. And Spain is probably one of the hardest hit regions in the world. Um, even, you know, you hear a lot about the United States now, but there's only 47 million people in Spain. There's like 330 million people here. So ratio-wise, we were hit hard, but we were never afraid, right? Because the blood of the Lamb sets us free from a fear that's that's just taken people, even believers, believers. When new believers that are just shivering and quaking in their boots because they're, they're afraid. And I don't say that as a, if that's you, I don't say that uh, to, to, to condemn or to judge, but God wants to set us free. Listen to what the Hebrew says. Hebrew says this about the blood of the lamb. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, Jesus, so that by his death... He might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. The preaching of the cross and the blood of the lamb is what sets us free from those fears. And if you have fear in your life, claim the blood of the lamb over your life. Claim the death of Christ because he doesn't want us to walk in fear. He wants to walk us to walk in victory. So they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. We often, uh, as Jane said, we have missions teams that come in. Maybe one day when all this craziness is over, we'll have a missions team from Endeavor Church to come and evangelize in, in, in Pamplona or maybe to help us uh, renovate a house in France that we're going to use for ministry. But we, we teach people to do what we call a testimony. And to, to in two minutes or less, tell your life before Christ, not your preacher money and not your biography, but your life before Christ, how you come to uh, know Jesus and the differences Jesus has made in your life. And then we, and we work with how they can translate it into different languages and present that. And, and a testimony is powerful because here's the thing. I, we, we, where we live, I would say the predominant religion uh, in Spain and in France is not even Catholicism anymore. I would say the predominant religion is atheism. I would say the default setting for most people in Europe, especially in France and, and also in Spain, is just not to believe in God at all. And I might not be smart enough to actually engage with someone that doesn't believe and talk about religion and science and, and all the different reasons and apologetics, right? I might not have that ability, but I can talk about what happened to me and nobody can take that away. 
right? Nobody. And that's why a testimony is powerful. When I was in college, I spent a summer on, at Panama City Beach with something called Beach Project. And what we did is we worked in secular jobs at McDonald's and hotels during the day. And at night, we had Bible studies and training and discipleship. And on Saturdays, we went out and did beach evangelism. And so uh, they taught us to do these testimonies. And I was at, I worked at a hotel, and this British lady who had worked there many, many years came up to me and said, So, what's your testimony? And I was like, what? But over the years, she had learned that this group of college kids from Alabama all, all could say their life story in two minutes and give a scripture at the end. And she was fascinated by it. So she went around the hotel saying, well, what's your testimony? Yeah, what's your testimony? And then she would critique each other's testimony. She would say, you know, her testimony is slightly better than yours. You know, and, just, and she would talk about which one she preferred. But it was really, it was funny, but everybody has a testimony. You have a testimony. They overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. I want to say something else. Do you know that as we're looking to be overcomers, do you know that it's not just me and you that have a testimony? We have a testimony. Your church family has a testimony. You have a testimony of your tragedies, your triumphs, your setbacks, your victories, your moments of laughter, of, 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 of tears. Your church has a testimony. And as we reflect back on not only what God has done in our lives, but my life, but we reflect on what God has done in our lives, we're stronger and we become overcomers. I think there's a a guy named Stanley Hauerwas who was a Methodist uh, ethicist, Christian ethicist, who said, the people of God become a people as we live an adventure together. And you as a church body have lived adventures together. Not just by yourself, but together. And you'll become stronger as you you live that adventure. You know, when we overcome by the word of the the, the blood of the lamb, uh, what we're really saying is, is Jesus' blood does it all. We're overcoming something that I call uh, the moralistic gospel, right? Which the moralistic gospel is when you just say, you know, what Jesus wants me to do is be a good person. I, I will, you know, I need to be a good person, a good person, not a jerk, right? I'm going to be a nice person and a good person, and I'll be the best me that I can be, and I'll live my life, I'll live my best life now, and I'll be a great person. But the blood of the lamb is, no, I'm, I'm a sinner. I need Jesus' death to, to wash me of my sins, right? The, the word of my testimony overcomes what I call the deistic gospel, Right? The deistic gospel is God's stuck a little decoration in my life, right? Uh, we have, you know, we have little Christian bumper stickers. And, 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 okay, my wife's Canadian, so she doesn't pick up on a lot of cultural cues here. But I'm from here, eh? I was like, eh? Like the, the Canadian thing. I'm from here. I'm from Alabama. My parents are from Mississippi. And let's be honest, in the South, we have a lot of this, right? This deistic, God is a decoration in my life, you know, bless you, and the Bible, and everything else. But the word that my testimony is, no, God has done something in my life, right? And he's not just a decoration. He has done something in my life. And the last thing, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and because they love not their lives unto death, right? One of the reasons we succumb to the bondage of the fear of death is that we're in love with our lives, and we're not supposed to be. I'm not saying that God doesn't want to give us joy and peace and happiness. He doesn't want us to enjoy life, but but we're muzzled by love it, being in love with this life, and we forget that we're just passing through, right? We're just, just, just a stopping place. Heaven is our home. We, I, I, I don't even know. I, we were listening to the praise and worship, and, and I, I thought, well, the songs they picked out today preach this message, right? There's almost no reason for me to stand up. But, you know, it's all about resurrection, right? This is just, this is temporary. And when I have that perspective that eternity is eternal, and this is just temporary, and I'm just passing through, I can fall out of love with my life, right? Jesus said in, um, in Mark, I'm not sure, yeah, can you go to the slide with Mark? 
Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, for some reason it's not here, but uh, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever wants to lose their life for me and for the gospel will save it, right? We're not supposed to be so in love with this, right? Even when we came back uh, to Huntsville, we were talking about different things we have to do uh, around our home. We own a home here, and we want to do this improvement and that improvement. Even Jane said, you know, let's not get involved in this keeping up with the Joneses and having more and more stuff because, you know, this house isn't so important, right? You know, Jesus said he's going to go and prepare mansions for us, right? And that's, the, that's what's really important. You know, Jane always says her mansion is going to be a lot bigger than my mansion because she had to put up with me and my shenanigans, right? And she says, I'll let you come and visit my mansion because it is, but not stay there because it's going to be bigger and better than yours. And that, maybe that's true. But, but you know, the house is, you know, right now the house here is nice. It's a house. But you know what? What's really going to be important is that in 10 million years, I can go to my children. Chloe and Nacho and visit them in their mansion, right? Because this life just isn't that important. We need to really focus on living for eternity. And if we live for eternity and not be so concerned about this life, that's another way of overcoming. So we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the word of our testimony. God did this in my life, and no matter what you say, you can't take it away. God has done this in this church family, and no matter what, you can't take that away. We know who we are because we know where we've been, and then we overcome by not loving our lives, by being focused on eternity. So I've gotten through really quick because I want to ask, what do you think? What do you think, right? Do you sometimes feel muzzled and not able to speak the truth? Do you feel rejection, right, in an age of restriction? How can the church be the church? How can Endeavor Church be Endeavor Church? Do we need to adapt? Has our mission changed? What does overcoming by the blood, our testimony, and not loving our lives look like in the real world? What does that look like? I'm going to turn it over. We wanted to actually, is there time? Okay, I, I didn't know if there, if this, so this doesn't uh, explode on me or at, at 12 o'clock or, you know, okay. Uh, okay, uh, so I, we'd like to, what do you think? What do you think? I'm going to let Pastor Jane start. So just raise your hand if you want to make a comment, because we want you all to be involved. Come on, y'all. You're the church. <laughs> Nobody. Okay. Yeah, I know. That's what I was saying. What was the question? One more time. First question. Do you feel, do you feel muzzled sometimes? Do you sometimes feel muzzled? Like you can't really speak the truth. Do you feel a rejection for speaking the truth? It's okay. Does anyone ever feel that way? Does anyone? Go to the next anyone. question, okay. too. Yeah. The next question. Um, oh, in an age of restrictions, how can the church be the church? And how Has can our the mission church be changed? Church? Right? Do we need to go back to something? I definitely do feel restricted a lot in trying to share like the truth of the gospel. Um, I'm very passionate about like pro-life causes and pre-born babies. And I do feel like a lot of times like, a lot of people don't want to hear it or they don't want to get involved. They don't want to hear about it. But the truth is that they are, we are made in his image. And it's important, I guess, as a church that we all come together and push that truth out and just keep on sharing it with people. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That is awesome. We need to keep her in prayer and, and everyone else that's involved with that work. Okay, well, good. Well, uh, this is, this is um, uh, you know, you, get, you go through stages of boldness sometimes, you know, and I, went, I had some boldness that I was witnessing there in the mall, and both times I got rejected. So, see, the mu I put the muzzle on myself, and so that's, that's what we do. It's, it, and I like the fact, Jane, you said this morning, 
repeated rejections. Yeah. You cannot allow that to muzzle you because right. we do that here in the United States. We want everything great and happy and <laughs> everybody to receive us all the time. And then, see, those two things kind of I muzzled myself. So I got to get back to it. Don't yeah. let rejection affect Not me. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One more. Uh, we. Shut up. <laughs> um, we were having dinner with some friends last night, and they were talking about all these different personality types, and and it was funny because as they talked about the the great things about each personality type, they talked about how each one of those was driven by deep seated fear or shame, and I thought it was very interesting that so many of the things that we try and perform good at are based on. Uh, the fear of the opposite thing happening. And and as you guys were talking about continual rejection, we don't like that. We, we like to go where we can get a reward instantly for what we're doing instead of an, an eternal reward and an eternal perspective. So a lot of times our perspective is focused on that immediate benefit instead of God's approval, God's, God's desire for his, for his church, for his body. And so it was just, and then have you guys show up here today and talk about the same thing. It was just really, really um, profound. So, Amen. Anyone else? Because different people feel different about this. I mean, like, I think uh, Mrs. Waller and my wife are like sister <laughs> twin souls or something that, you know, just, they've never been muzzled. <laughs> a day, no, that's you know? not true. But uh, <laughs> they're very bold. But other people are more conscious of like, oh, how is this going to be received and so forth. Um, what about another question? You know, when I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a junkie about uh, church websites, and I go to church websites, even our own in Spain, and we talk about the programs and the events, and this is what our worship's like, and this is the kind of clothes you can wear or not wear, or, and this is, you know, this is what will help for your children. And it's all events and programs and, and so forth. But, you know, Jesus' gospel was really different. Jesus was like, you know, okay, foxes have uh, holes and birds have nests, but... I have nowhere to lay my head. Are you going to follow me now? You know, and lose your life and deny your... Have we lost the edge of the gospel, right? What do you guys think about that? What, is that? Is that something, is that just me? Or is the Holy Spirit telling us to go back to the bare bones message of the gospel? Has it changed? What do you all think about that? Does anyone have... Okay, there's a... Uh, I definitely think that we have lost the edge of the gospel because when you said, um, have we lost our life? Have we? I can't say I've lost my life. I have it really easy. I have a place to lay my head. I have everything. What have we lost as a church? Powerful. Yeah, thank you for doing that. So, um, whoa, that's loud. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I just, I'm so glad you guys came. So, just, I, I just want to thank you guys for coming and speaking. Like, this has been awesome. Hasn't this been awesome, guys? Like, thank you so much for coming and speaking today. Um, it, yeah, just thank you. Um, so. Me personally, this has been something that's been on my heart, actually, just recently. Um, this past week, I had a viral infection and was battling that, and um, God got a hold of me, and because I took the time to sit with him and to seek his face and to seek what was going on and ask him, you know, what, what, what needs to happen, Lord? How, how do you want to change my life? you know, and just getting back to the basics. I think that's so important to go back to the basics um, and find out who you are. You have to know who your identity is in him first before you can do anything else. So I think that's really important um, just to back up that point of really seeking God first um, before you can go out. Because if you don't know who you are in him, you d you're not going to have any power in that, so I, I encourage everybody to find their identity um, a little bit more and really seek that out, and just get get away with him because it is so important to get away with him and just spend time with him. And because I did that, I I personally now have found 
myself a little bit more, and it's awesome, and I'm, I'm ready to see what he's got for me. Um, I know he's doing something, and I can feel it, and I can see it. I've got more joy in my life. It is such a blessing. I'm even more confident. I normally don't speak. I hate speaking. Like this, this right now, I'm actually kind of terrified. I'm shaking. You can't see it, but I am. Um, but I'm learning who I am in him, and I'm really leaning and trusting on him right now to know what I'm supposed to do in the church body. And it's, I'm, I'm just excited to see what's going to happen. So thank you. Thanks so much, Naomi. I think she's a good speaker. And that, <laughs> <laughs> and that segues really good into the last question. I know that we need to, 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 to wrap it up. Yeah. So great listening to the body of Christ. You know, not just, not just us, but listening to you all. Uh, but does anyone else have an, an anecdote like what Naomi just shared? How does overcoming by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony, and by loving not our lives... How did, what does that look like? Does anyone have a, a, a story about that? Uh, you know, uh, or, or, you know, maybe uh, I would just, uh, not a prayer time now, but if, you, if you're overcome by that fear of death, even though, even though you know you're going to heaven, it's like, you know, I want to overcome that, right? Maybe we can talk later on or talk to the pastors, but does anyone have a practical uh, a way of how this works out in, in daily life? Yes, Naomi, <laughs> again. Okay. <laughs> so for me personally, I know that I actually have to make time. Like it is, like I said, I had to really sit down and, and force myself a little bit to really spend time with God. If you don't take the time out of your day, it, like – Whatever little time that you have, any downtime that you've got where you just feel like you, you need a rest or something, seek them out. Seriously. Like, if you need to shut the world out, go into a room in your house where you can get quiet. I know it can be hard for parents sometimes with children and everything. But if you seriously take time and, and really persevere through making time for him, your life is going to change drastically. Even if it's for, like, a minute or two minutes, you know, just do whatever you have to do to, you know, get in his presence. For me, it's, it's to put on some worship music and just sit with him and just talk with him and pray. Um, and I'm, 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 this is brand new to me. Like, I'm, I'm just starting to do this. And so that, that's how I do it is I just I take some time every day, either in the morning or in the afternoon, whenever I've got a little bit of downtime and I say, okay, God, I'm going to sit with you. What do you want to talk to me about today? Can I share my day with you? And it is so important to do that. So I encourage you guys to, to really persevere and, and push through that. Amen. Anyone else want to share anything about anything that we've been saying? Yeah, there's a, okay. one new person. One thing I would just suggest is turn off the media, turn off the news, and just like Naomi was saying, um, just put on worship music, but a big thing for me, I would just go to my keyboard, and me and Ryan will just praise the Lord, because I feel like you praise him in the storm, when all this is going on, you worship him, because that confuses the devil, for one thing, us um, rejoicing and worshiping God, because he wants us to be down and depressed and discouraged, but that's just something I do, I, I just, you just gotta set your mind to it, and just go and get in that quiet place with him, so that's what I do. Yeah, you know, that worship has come up a couple of times, and I think worship music reminds us of our testimony, reminds us of what God has done in our lives. So you were talking about our testimony, and one of the things that came to mind was um, I had a, a spiritual battle that I was going through last week, and God led me to Scripture. And that's the power of our testimony, is not just our words, but it's God's words. And his words are my testimony because they're my truth too, right? God's promises are our promises. We get to say that by his stripes we are healed. And so he led me to the scriptures and I just, I, that was my testimony. And I testified to Satan and I told him this is the reality because this is what God says. And what you're trying to put on me, I don't accept that. And that's the power 
of having the word of God. It becomes our testimony. So even if you don't have some, you know, big story to tell about, you know, what God has done in your life, you can go to his word and say, this is who he is. That's the testimony we all have, is we get to say who God is to us and who he is to you. Amen. Anybody else would like to share something? Someone new, going once. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now you got preachers here. Yeah. I was just kind of, I was kind of thinking about like, uh, you know, how we do communion in remembrance of what He's done. Same thing. We should remember our testimony of when we came to know Him. There's power in that testimony. Is that something that, you know, if we have to go back and remember, you know, um, that that first day where we came and and He changed everything in our lives. You know, no, no matter how big or how small we think that testimony is, there's power in that testimony. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, I know that we, in a way, I realize when we talk about being overcomers that uh, uh, we're kind of preaching to the choir, right? Because I know that this is a church of overcomers. And I know that this is a church, we've been here many times, that preaches the unadulterated true gospel. And I know that there are many people here, but we just want to encourage you in these times to be overcomers, to come out of this, as, as Wendy was saying, this season, because that's all it is, is a season, and seasons have a beginning, and seasons have an end, and we'll remember this like we remembered other times in history, but we came out of it victorious because Jesus paid the price for our victory, and we can come out of it victorious um, knowing uh, that God will get us through the next season. And, and we realize many of you uh, are, you know, are already strong. Uh, but, you know, I also feel like this is a time when, uh, not to use a sexist phrase, but uh, the boys and the men will be separated, right? And they, their studies are showing that about 30% of the cri- people, the Christians, people said they were Christians, 30% of the churchgoers in the United States, when all of this is over, just aren't going to come back. Right, thirty percent, and 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 it's it's a time. It's almost like I believe we're a time uh, when Gideon's going to the to the brook with his army, and God is saying, "Too many, too many, too many," and 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 we're really going to see who is serious about their faith and who isn't. And I know that this is a strong church, and I want to encourage you uh, to stay strong and to be overcomers. So thank you so much. But we, we, we ran through the sermon because we wanted to hear your hearts. Uh, because we learn when we hear you guys. We learn so much. And it's things that we can take back to Spain and to France and say, this is what believers there are saying. And that was important for us to hear you. And uh, so we, I really appreciate the opportunity that Jeremy has given us to speak to you today and the opportunity to hear your hearts. So I bless you. I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy. I just want to pray for this congregation, if you'll permit me. Okay. Thank you so much, Lord, for this congregation, God. Thank you for Endeavor Church, God. Just I bless this congregation, God. We bless the pastors. We bless uh, Jeremy and Wendy, God. We bless the, the emeritus pastors, God, that are behind them, uh, the, the brother Waller and, his, and, 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 and Mrs. Waller, God. Uh, we bless this congregation, their leadership, God. We know that you are leading them forth uh, from glory to glory, God, as they press on to know you, as they press on to sing your praises, as they press on to be a light in this Jones Valley, God, and a light in the city of Huntsville, God. We know, God, that you are going to do great things here, God. God, help us to take off muzzles of fear and anxiety, not be afraid of death, not be in love with our lives, but to press on to lose our lives, God, in you, God, because when we lose our lives here, we find something so much more and so much better, God, and I pray that each of us would discover that better that you have for us as we lose uh, earthly things and, 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 and preoccupations, God. Thank you, God. Bless this place. Bless this congregation. Bless this city and state. In the name of Jesus, amen. Ooh, someone left me a nice electronic device here. <laughs> no, I'm joking. 
Last year, we talked about going on a mission trip to Spain, and that's not something that we can do right now. But let me say this. If you were going to go to Spain, you would have to raise some money. You would have to call some friends. You would get them to donate. But you would have a sizable amount of money to pay out. Since we don't have the opportunity to actually go, physically go to Spain, let's cough up the money that we would have spent going. Um, and I know several of you raised your hands last year. I remember, I actually, well, it was last year. It was 20, 2019, wasn't it? Yeah, 2019. You guys were here in December. And I remember a, a large number of hands went up. So I want to ask you, we're going to take up an offering. I want to ask you to dig deep this morning. So if you can dig deep, can you come and play? And I know some of you may be thinking about, well, the economy, the economy, God seems outside the economy. It doesn't affect anything in his kingdom. So what's going on in, in our country, in the world right now, really doesn't affect him. He's got it all. It's all his. So let's pray. Father, I just pray right now, Lord, that as we give, as we dig deep to give, Lord, that you would bless this money, Lord, that you would multiply it and you would use it for your kingdom, Lord, and, and that the wards would be able to reach the Basque population in France and Spain, Lord. I just thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for who you are and what you're doing, Lord. We just pray this in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. Close us out in prayer. Father, may the hope that you've given us, Lord, may the love that you've given us, may the faith that we have, Lord, may, may it be on full display for the world to see. May we live the kind of lifestyle that causes people to come to us and ask us about our testimony. Why are we different, Lord? Father, and I pray that people would come to know who you are and how incredible you are. And I just thank you so much, Lord, for your goodness to us, Lord. We don't deserve it, but you're good anyway. As we go from this place, Lord, I pray, Father, that we'd remember we're on a mission field, even here and now. And I just thank you for everything you've given us, Lord, the blessings that we have. We just pray this in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. Church, you're dismissed.